Okay, hi, this is Mike Goodkey, and I'm going to give you a quick motion tutorial here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure our duration of our project is 30 seconds long. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to click on the motion project and click open. And that's going to open up the motion project. Now, what we're going to do to create this tunnel effect, um, which is very cool, is we're going to, first of all, create a circle that is going to represent the size and the sort of image that's going to be a, a, a set of lights is going to be repeated around. So I just drew a circle like that and we're just going to call this light ring. Okay. And then I'm going to draw uh, another circle that's going to be much smaller. And if you hold the shift key down, it keeps it even. And we're just going to call this uh, light particle. All right. And if we look into each of these inspectors, we're just going to put the properties all to zero because these things really don't matter to be at zero, but it's just keeping the project clean. And it's much nicer if you keep your project clean. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're basically going to make this particle replicate. So you simply hit this replicator button here. And what that does is it actually creates this pattern and normally it's defaulted to rectangle, but we're going to actually default this to a piece of geometry and the piece of geometry is going to be this light ring. So if we go back to this replicator here and we just drag this light ring into there and now you see you've replicated this shape. And the more points you, you set on that replicator curve, the more uh, circles replicate around in that curve. And what's cool about this, this uh, way we set this up is I can actually take the actual particle light and I can actually scale that up. And, oops, sorry, this is the particle. And as you see, is if I scale that up, because it's repeating that object, it's repeating, the scale is getting uh, repeated around all of those. So you can see here that we have this replicator and it's pretty cool. We got a simple little thing here that um, we can, as I say, adjust how many times, think how many items repeat around it. And so we're gonna just change this to five because more of them, let's try this, let's do eight, okay. Now, the next thing we want to do is we actually want to make this thing repeat towards us. And the easiest way to make it repeat towards us and give it some interesting things is to make it actually a, a particle generator. So if I take uh, this group, I can basically say, okay, I'm going to call this group uh, light, light ring with particle. And I'm going to basically click on that group and then I'm going to make it particles. Okay. Now what that does is it creates a new group with an emitter. An emitter basically is a particle generator. And we're just going to keep that emitting from a point. And if we play this through, we can see there's just particles going everywhere. So what we want to do is make this group a 3D group because we're going to have the particles come towards us. So if you control click and make that a 3D group, um, now it's a 3D group. And now if I get the emitter and I click on the make the emitter 3D, now it's also 3D. Now as you see here, it now adds an X, Y, and Z to its direction. So I'm going to make all of these be zero to start off with, okay? And as we see here, as the particles are emitting now, they're coming towards the camera. And as we see, we can see that the speed at which they come towards the camera is the speed right here. So if I increase that speed, as we play it, you can see they're coming faster towards us. Now, we have a 30 second um, composition here or, or project. So I'm going to make sure that the lifetime of those particles is 30 seconds. And we're going to keep on playing around with this speed. Let's make it even a thousand. All right. Okay. So that's pretty good. It's very cool looking. You can see it's like little light rays coming out. 
but we want this to start further back from us. So if we click on the group, we click on the properties, um, and we open up position now, we can make this go way back into the distance there. And now when we play this, you can see now the light rays are coming much further towards us. And we can even go back further. Let's try it minus 8,000. Whoa, okay, so now we see what's happening here. Now we're gonna to start to have some fun. So let's go back into our replicator here. And we're gonna see, whoops, sorry, our emitter. We're basically going to look at this emitter and we're gonna change some things in here and I'm gonna show you what happens here. Now, basically the birth rate is how dense this stream is, right? So if we change this to like two particles, you can see two particles are emitted and now they're shooting towards us. And you can see they're moving. You can see the particles are moving, they're animating towards us over time, and they're coming past the camera. Now, if we increase this, let's say to 100, now it's super solid. And you can't really see that the particles are moving once they come all the way into frame. So it makes it look like it's a solid object. And that can be helpful um, for things which we will see later. So we're just going to make this like five for now and just kind of see. So we can see these particles moving towards us, right? And we're going to make the speed. I think the speed at 1,000 is still pretty good. But we want these particles basically to already be full screen, so to speak, right? We want, we want it kind of to start like here, right? And so to do that, all you have to do is basically move your emitter layer back. And then you can just extend this back out to fill the space. And now from the very start of your project, uh, on your timeline, you'll see that they're, they're already there. They're already coming from infinity at the start of this, of this project. So that allows us to not see the, the line elements being drawn on. They're just there. And if we go to the end here, we're getting particles all the way through. Okay, great. So now we're going to play with some stuff here. Now the angle... It's basically the entire replicator structure, okay? So let's say that you wanted to have it slowly rotate over time, and you just wanted that kind of the slowly rotate, like the camera's kind of like rotating around. Well, what you could do with that angle is you could click on the little tab, the little drop down here, and you could add a behavior, and you could add a um, let's just do here for the sake of simplicity, a ramp. Now, a ramp says at the start of your timeline, what do you want the value to be? And at the end of your timeline, what do you want your value to be? So let's say over that 30 seconds, I want to do uh, 360 move. Now you see the particles as they're emitting, they're rotating. And so it's in a different location. So it kind of gives this illusion of, of a bend, but really what it is is the whole structure is, is, is emitting particles and then those particles are moving forward. So it kind of creates this, this rotation here. Um, and that's kind of an interesting effect, uh, but I'm gonna get, get rid of that effect because I, I don't wanna have that. So I'm gonna delete that. But I just hope that helps to understand what that particular angle does. Now the spin is a little bit more interesting because this is kind of more like a twist. So if we look at this, this actually feels like it's actually twisting the particles and I don't have to add any sort of uh, change to this or add any behavior to give it this kind of interesting look. Now you'll notice at the start of this the particles are just popping in pop 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 right? We kind of want to have those particles fade in at the start. So in order to do that, we are going to go to our emitter here and we're going to do opacity over life. And what that means is what is the opacity when it starts, when the particle is born 
And what is the opacity when the particle dies at 30 seconds? So I'm going to add another little tab here. And at the start, we're going to make the particle zero. So now you see at the start here, they're dark or there's you know, zero transparency and they increase in transparency over time. And you know, if we move this down, it, it affects the whole uh, flow of those particles. So, so now it's really dark in the middle, transparent, and then as they get out here further, now it gets more opaque. And so that can kind of create some interesting things, especially if we increase the birth weight rate so that we make it more solid, right? So we're gonna increase that birth rate um, back to 100, let's say. Now it just looks like, you can't even tell, right? It's like, it's just a solid thing. But if I move this down, you start to see that this, this starts to become more and more transparent as we go down the line here. And if we wanted them to not even be solid at the end, we could change the status to 50%. Now, the reason why it's not getting dark is because we have so many particles being repeated in here that when they're laid on top of each other, uh, it makes it still solid. So if we reduce this, say, to 30, now we can start to see the transparency being affected because see, you can see all these particles uh, repeated on top of each other. Well, that's what's making it seem like it's really solid when really it's not. Um, it's actually translucent because we've made the end result translucent. We can even bring that translucency down. But we don't see the movement anymore, right? Because now the particles are so many of them and they're moving down these, these streams that you don't really see that there's any uh, movement here. So we need to add some color to this so that we can actually create some color. So we're going to do the color mode here. And normally it just says original, which was our which was our particle right here. So for instance, if we change this particle color, that changes our entire uh, animation because all the particles are that color. So if we go back to our emitter and instead of original color, we're gonna do pick from color range. Now it gives us a color range here. So we have this color at the start and this color at the end. And it basically randomizes between that. If I double click that, I'm going to make it a little bit darker just so we can kind of see the difference. Now when I play this back, now you can see those particles moving again because there's a randomness inside of these of these of of the particles here that gives it that that um, movement again. And if we change the birth rate down to let's say 10, you can really start to see the the particles moving down these uh, these strands that we've created. And so that's pretty awesome. We can increase the spin here. So if we want it to be more intense, right? So you can do all kinds of fun stuff there. Okay. So that's basically what we got going here. And if I hit this random seed generator, it will randomize sort of what the random colors are within those strands of particle generators. And obviously we could add other colors here. So if I scoot this over, add another color here, make this, let's say red. Now you got some red in that as well. So that's fun. You can do some very interesting things with that. Um, but right now we're just gonna keep the two colors. We're gonna get rid of this one. Whoops. So you just drag it off. I'll bring this one back up to here. So that gives us the, that fluctuating thing here. And so we also have the scale and that's the scale of the whole sort of shebang here. So you can go back further. So if we want it to be more extreme or you want to bring it up closer, all right? So we'll keep that 100%. And let's go up here. Let's, so let's, let's start to experiment here. So let's make this a little bit more solid again. So we're gonna increase the birth rate. And you see, we still get that, that movement there, right? We still get the movement. So if I, if I make this random, the birth rate, uh, sorry, not that one. 
sorry about that. If I make the uh, size, let's see, where's our size? It's down here. So if I make the scale randomness, let's say 50%, whoa, crazy, right? <laughs> here it is here. If I make it, let's say 2%, you can start to see that the scale is a little bit different down the pipeline. That kind of makes it look like it's out of focus. But we're going to keep that solid. Okay. So what else can we do with this type of uh, creation that we're, we're doing here? Well, let me see here. If we make the speed faster, what will that do? Let's make it or slower, let's say. Well, now it's going to affect kind of, let's, let's see here, 1500. Let's see what that does. Now it kind of affects the shape of our vortex, right? So a thousand, you can see it's, it's really dense in the distance and then kind of spirals out. And if I go 1500, now it's faster, right? So now it's less strands that are coming at us. So that's a pretty interesting look we got going here. Okay, so what can we do with this? What other fun things can we do? Well, right now we have all of the replicators the, the the same size right they're all the same size so if we go back and we solo this layer let me just solo this you can see that that's our replicator so all of these are, are the same size the same density and one of the things we can do is if we go in behaviors here and we do the replicator we can sequence this replicator and what that does is allows us to add some animation to how these things show up or duplicate. So one of the things we can add here is opacity. And what we can do is make the opacity zero. And the sequencing, we're gonna go through inverted. And what that does is as it's coming on, you can see over time, it adds the next one. And it will do that all the way around the circle. Now, we wanna do this like maybe 10 times over the course of the 30 seconds. So now when I play this back, we can see, okay, now you see how it stutters there at the end? That's because we have this set to hold, the in condition. So if we make that wrap, then it will continue. So if you watch this now, there you go. So what's interesting about this is we've got these dots now rotating around. So let's see what happens if we turn off the solo for this layer. Now we've got those strands repeating around and kind of fading in, right? Which is a pretty cool looking thing. So one of the things we can do here is if we make the spread wider, let's say five, Let's say three. Now more of the elements are still faded up, right? So now you have them kind of fading, fading away. You got a really nice looking thing here. And let's say we don't want them to go all the way to zero. We can make this to say 30%. So now it's just kind of like a darker pattern that's undulating around the whole thing. Hopefully you can see that. Uh, and we can go back to our, our particle itself, and we've got that still set to 100, which is great. And we've got our emitter here. Let's bring the transparency. We only want it to fade up at the very beginning, so we're going to bring this back about right there. Okay, so now it's like a little bit too subtle that uh, the thing going around. So we're gonna we're gonna adjust that a little bit more. Let's uh, see here. Let's make it ten. There we go. In fact, let's go back down to zero. And let's make the width uh, spread only two. Okay, 
So that's looking pretty awesome. So now let's actually make this emitter, let's make it go even faster. So let's make this like 3000. That's a little bit too fast. There you go. And if we make the birth rate smaller, we got those little dots like Vegas lights. Or if we make this 100, that's a little bit more solid, these, these lines. Boy, is my computer going slow. Let's see, let's do this half res. There's no, no reason to do this full res. Even quarter res, I think. All right, so you see how these particle lines are, are working out for us here. Really quite awesome. Okay, so now what we want to do is now we want to kind of give it a little bit more of a, a trippy look to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that group and we're just going to call this, uh, we might as well just bring this into that group. So we'll drag that all together. We're just going to call this uh, tunnel. Okay. And that's basically our little tunnel we got going there. Now it's actually doing it the correct way. All right, that's looking pretty awesome. I'm digging that. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is in this tunnel group, we're going to add a filter to this. And one of the filters that gives us a really nice look here is this light rays. And so if we make this, let's say 200, let's make the glow like three. Now you can start to see it's a pretty awesome looking element here because now it feels thicker, right? It feels like it's thicker. Now, you remember back here in the replicator that we did eight points. Now, what happens if we say did this to three points? Now you got just three dots going here. And obviously the spread and stuff that we had set up in the emitter um, is going to be more, it's going to affect it differently if there's only three dots than if there's eight dots. So let's go up, let's say, make this 12 dots. What happens? Now there's more definition here, as you see. So let's go back into, uh, let's see here, our emitter. What am I trying to find? Okay, so let's take and let's make birth rate be back to 50. Let's break it up a bit. Maybe even less, 20. Right on. Okay. Next thing we're going to do here. Let me try to find what I'm looking for. We want to... This is the sequence replicator. Okay. I'm going to take the sequence replicator. I'm going to turn it off for now. So we just got the whole tunnel going. I don't have any... Now what's interesting about this is now we can kind of uh, experiment with the actual replicator itself and you can see more like, okay, if I only have four, that's what it looks like. If I have a whole bunch, that's what it's going to look like. And 
if I get my density up. Now, as you remember, what's the density in? That's in your emitter. And that's what we call basically the birth rate. So if we make that 50, it's gonna make it more solid. So we'll go back into here, whoops, not that one. Replicator, let's drop this back down. And there we go. Now, if we have this randomness on the replicator, that can create some really interesting effects. Now you'll see here, the, what's interesting about light rays is they only allow you to do 200, all right? So what I would recommend is control duplicate that light rays so you got two of them here and make the second one, let's say 100, maybe like three. So that creates a pretty interesting looking thing. It's almost like a pinwheel. Uh, let's bring this down again. And that's quite awesome. So that's that's basically what the the emitter by changing the uh, randomness of the scale here, that's what that's going to do. So we'll go back down to zero and that brings us back to the smooth looking tunnel. And let's see what we can do here. Let's change the uh, let's, what, what else will we do? like this. Now let's do, let's go back and change this uh, angle here. Let's see what that does. If I add a, let's see, let's do a ramp again. Uh, let's say 360. Interesting. What if we do minus 700? What will that do? Now what's interesting is even though it's spinning, it's, it's trying to almost compensate for the spin and it cancels it out. So the colors are, are sort of undulating through it, but the actual spin isn't as, as much, isn't as easily detected. Looks looking pretty good. So let's see what else we can do with these settings. So let's turn that ramp back off. Get rid of that. Go back to our simple setting here. Now we still have our sizing um, random. Uh, I think it's on our replicator here. Yeah. Oh no, we don't have any randomness to that. Let's see if we add some randomness to that. And like I said, this is the color. So if we randomize this, you can see it changes the color. But anyways, this is a, this is a fun thing and you can start to experiment with this and and you can start to get all kinds of interesting things um, by layering these up. So for instance, I could take and let us duplicate the emitter. And now in the second emitter, let's change the colors here. So let's make this, oh, let's make this a red color. All right, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that whole layer, let's go to properties here, and we're just gonna rotate it on the Z axis. Oh, 
Oops, didn't want to do that. Sorry. I lied. Let's see here. Whoa, holy cow. <laughs> okay, let's see here. This is the angle. Let's make this 60. Now you can see there's the two different ones kind of interlaced, the blue and the red. And maybe we just make this pink here. There we go. And then maybe on this one, we make it a little purpley. So you can see, you can start to experiment. You can get some really interesting looks going on here. And let's say we just wanted to start back further, let's say, and then move forward. So let's say instead of 8,000, let's go for like minus 20,000. And then let's say maybe we set a keyframe there. And then maybe at the end, maybe we've moved way down to the end of it. In fact, we've gone out of the tunnel. And maybe as we go down the tunnel, it would be nice if we spun a little bit. So if we had some Z rotation that going to work? No, it doesn't look like it. Orientation? No, nope, that's not going to work. As you see here, if I rotate the X, you can see it's creating this sort of uh, this sort of element, you know, in 3D space. So if I put down, let's say, 90 degrees, well, let's say 45 degrees, 20 degrees, minus 30 degrees. Kind of looks pretty trippy. Same with this one. This would be this way. Right? Kind of interesting. But we're just doing this tunnel effect. Now, I don't know why this is not working. Maybe I have to animate it. Let's see if I take one there. Oops. And at the very end, I do 360. Is that animated? Nope, doesn't change it. Well, let's see how we would have to do that. So I think it's because, well, I know what can do it. If we take the actual replicated layer and we rotate that, that should give us, yes, that gives us the tunnel move. Now that's going to move both tunnels though. So let's see if we rotated this one. Oh, that's not going to do it. So let's, let's move this replicator. Let's move both tunnels. So at the start, we're going to make it zero. And the Z, remember the Z is the rotation that we want. And then we'll make that 360. And 
now it's actually changing the where we are in that rotation. Let's see if we make it 720. Okay, cool. So now let's also make, let's see what we got going on here with our emitters. So we got five on that one. We got 50 on that one. Let's make this 10. And then if we turn off one of those, I'll make both the light rays really big. And in fact, I'm going to duplicate that again. And make that two brightness, make that four. So anyways, you can start to see how fun this is. You can make a lot of interesting things uh, using this basic layout, this basic setup. I know at the end here of kind of like <laughs> just experimenting. <laughs> and this is what you have to do. I mean, like literally you have to experiment because if you don't experiment, you're like, well, what does this do? I don't know. Well, let's try what that does. Well, what does this do? I don't know. Let's try what that does. And you just experiment, you know? Um, Let's go back over pattern. Let's see what that does. Mm -hmm. Let's get rid of the scale randomness on each of these. Uh, let's make the end of that 200. Well, let's see what we got in here. Pick from color range. Pick from color range. Scale. Scale. Let's turn off all the light rays and just so we can see what's going on here. Let's increase these back up so they're mostly. Mostly solid. to spend 100. And what's nice is like we could keep in frame the spin for instance. So let's, let's add a, well, we don't want to do logarithmic. So what do we want to do? Let's make the, let's make the spin. Well, maybe we want to oscillate it. Let's oscillate it between Well, that's a pretty wild thing. Let's get rid of that. Let's do 
Plus angle. Let's oscillate the angle. Oscillate. Oh yeah, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> it's just craziness, right? It's pretty cool. And we go back in the replicator here. Let's make this six. Oh, it's almost like tentacles. Let's do another. So we got an oscillator on this one. Let's add an oscillator on this one too. So add behavior, oscillate. I'm going to make that speed is going to be like three, 200. start to see how fun this is and you know right now the top layer here isn't really doing much with that bottom layer but if we go over to properties we could actually do like an add and you can see now it brightens these areas where they're overlapping and that kind of gives it another added effect and now we turn back on our light blast let's just do one for now let's see Make this a hundred. Make this two. Now you got something pretty psychedelic. So, anyways, I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. Um, I'm gonna do more of these, hopefully. So, keep checking back, subscribe, and. Um, be looking for some more of these motion tutorials because like you guys, I'm just diving into this program. I'm an After Effects guy, but I just find motion incredible. And what's really fun is when you actually get into um, rigging something like this so that you can bring it into Final Cut and actually have this be an element that you could actually change. So I'm actually going to show you um, in the next video how you can rig this and make this actual something that uh, will change and be, be controllable within um, Final Cut. So thanks a lot. Tune in next time. See you later.